हेलो लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन वेलकम बैक टू एक्सोटिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी नाइस टू सी यू बैक एंड दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग विच आई लर्न रिसेंटली एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस वीडियो इज लर्न टू प्रेडिक्ट जस्ट यूजिंग नक्षत्रास of course uh, this is an example chart of a pisces ascendant it's written asc ascendant is pisces uttar bhadrapada t3 but i have not included the horoscope to make it a bit different uh, generally we always see the north indian or south indian style horoscopes and we start predicting but today i will teach you something which you can use without even uh, looking at the horoscope all right so just by the flavor of the nakshatras just nakshatras and nothing else not a single horoscope you need to see just the nakshatras that's all so for example uh, if you if you think uh, what what could be the career for this person how would you analyze uh you may think okay maybe this person is pisces lagna so that means sagittarius is the ninth house sorry the 10th house for this person and does he have any planet in sagittarius wow neptune is there but we have no idea of what neptune does as per vedic astrology or we don't consider it so you will see technically the 10th house is empty as per vedic astrology so then you will be you might be clueless so then you might think oh the 10th lord is jupiter he is in anuradha so maybe that gives you some clues but suppose you did not know that this is a pisces ascendant now you know it because i have written it there but suppose you did not know then how would you say or suppose you uh, you you had not seen the horoscope of this person you just had this list without the ascendant pisces then how would you uh, predict just by using the nakshatra as well it's very easy to do that so of course it's difficult to be uh, 100% accurate but at least you can get an idea so for example whenever we are talking of career we need to check certain planets irrespective of the horoscope the first planet that we need to judge is the sun okay sun is very 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 crucial because sun is the one of the karakas for the 10th house he is the karaka for name fame power position and authority so you will see this sun is in jeshtha nakshatra here now for pisces of course uh, scorpio is in the 9th house but let us keep it aside for some time let us assume we do not know that this is a pisces lagna okay so we see jeshtha nakshatra is there here then who is the other planet which we should uh, look for career yes you are right it is mercury because he is the primary karaka for the 10th house he represents the skills that we use in our profession so again he is in scorpio again he is in jeshtha he is very heavily combust third path see they are almost 1 degree apart 26 12 25 11 so just bit more than one so bo- both the planets are in jeshtha nakshatra so what clues do you get something very secretive or something hidden should be there right then let us come to the third planet which is that planet you are right you guessed it right it is saturn because saturn is the karaka for the dashamsha chart saturn shows the labor that we need to put for 
getting success in any field all right so saturn here is direct it is in aquarius and it is in shatta bhisha nakshatra so there you see again this shatta bhisha is coming shatta bhisha is also related to something very secretive something hidden or something which uh, which you don't like to show to others it, it's not necessarily bad something which you don't show uh, but it can represent things which you want to keep very private so yes this person is this person had been a spy for a particular country and this person did really very well and what is the job of the spies to take down authorities and governments right i mean of course by leaking uh, hidden information so therefore you see this jishtha nakshatra here sun mercury and saturn in chatabisha this is playing role very beautifully but there are certain things which you have to note here you see this uh, jeshtha third pada is active so whenever the third pada is active i have always seen there is too much traveling which the person does somehow or the other or there is a lot of communication and this person had to communicate from one place to the other very secretly to some higher authority again this jeshtha is coming there and this saturn is in chatabhisha but it is not in third pada it is in the second pada so i have seen when saturn is associated with the second pada or if the second pada is very much involved somehow then the person cannot be superficial he has to be very sure of what he is doing otherwise he might be caught so therefore the person has to be very meticulous and very detail oriented which definitely he is and saturn is very strong it is in aquarius great sign it is very 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 powerful so by this we can conclude that the person will need to use certain traits which which he has to organize in a very detailed manner very detailed now you see here mercury is also combust although it is direct but it is combust okay that means it was retrograde and then it became direct and now it is again going to cross the sun in fact it is just behind the sun one degree almost a bit more than one so what does this mean mercury is behind the sun this means that the person will always have to first use his talent and only then he can get name and fame so talent is behind name and fame you see mercury is behind the sun unless you prove yourself you will not get name fame but sometimes mercury is ahead of the sun so then what happens first you get some opportunity you become uh, you get some authority or leadership role and then you showcase showcase your talents it happens the other way around sometimes i've seen so now when we know the flavor of these three planets like sun mercury and saturn when we get a flavor of the nakshatras we could try to see uh, if there are any other planets in the nakshatras which are ruled by that planet so what do i mean by this so let's take shatabhisha for example shatabhisha is ruled by rahu so which are the other nakshatras ruled by rahu it is ardra and swati so is there ardra anywhere ardra is not there but swati is there and who sits there rahu is sitting there in swati so by this we can understand he has to be 
associating himself with a foreign land, foreign country. Because Swati means Swati, which means uh, going away from your tradition. Not literally that you are breaking your tradition, but uh, you might have to physically stay away uh, from your Swachetra, which is your own town, own place, own people, own community. Okay. Or the word Swati can mean uh, different things at times. Swati can mean a lot too much indulgence with your own materialistic pleasure, your own stuff, with your own family, friends, you know, which becomes like poison sometimes. And Swati is the Karaka for, uh, so, sorry, it's not the Karaka, Swati represents the winds, okay. And then we check if there are any other planets also in these nakshatras. So there you go, he has this Venus in Libra, in Swati. So, because Venus uh, is a natural benefit, this could represent a developed nation. Developed nation does not mean uh, very rich and wealthy necessarily. Developed nation can also mean uh, where things are very easy for him to... It's very easy to be comfortable. It can mean uh, you are at a place where you have a lot of friends or uh you have a good support from the society okay so it's like saying it's a foreign land but there's a lot of support from the society okay so that is how you can know and because this is venus this can have uh, things to do with the opposite sex sometimes all right so then we check if there is any other planet in swati no, there are no other planets. Then for Jeshta, Jeshta is ruled by Mercury. Is there any other planet in Jeshta? There are no other planets. So which are the other nakshatras ruled by Mercury? One is Revati nakshatra and the other one is... So let's take Revati first. So we see moon is there in Pisces. So, this sun is there in Mercury rule nakshatra, then Mercury is there. So, again, this Revati thing is very prominent. So, Revati nakshatra is related to Pusan. Hmm? So, Pusan is very famous for leading a pack of uh, a group of animals, basically, sheep sometimes. So, we could come to a conclusion that this person would be in a very big position when it comes to spying on others. Because the leadership trait is there in Jeshta, it is also there in Revati. Because Jeshta is, uh, we you know, Indra is associated, Indra is the king. Devaraj Indra is the king of the Devas, of the demigods. So, therefore, this Revati, this leadership thing is coming from that again. Alright. And of course, uh, because it is moon, so therefore, he has to do it in a way that other people like him. Not that you are just doing whatever you want. Alright. So... That is Jeshta, that is Revati, and the other one is Ashlesha, ruled by Mercury, but there are no planets in Ashlesha. Alright, so of course there are many things which we can uh, discuss regarding this, but uh, this was just a introduction to this topic and hopefully we will do more videos in the future related to this and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, you could go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Thank you very much.